All right, so I'm going to do the, the race question on organic chemistry question of the 2019 chemistry paper. All right, so in this question, we're basically reacting different size metals of zinc with hydrochloric acid. So we test, so we want to see the effect of surface area on rate of reaction. All right, so again, they give us some time and you have to read it. All right, so the time, just be quickly. Right, so they already did that one. All right, so experiment two, 20, when you do one over the time, All right, so for 20, 0 0.050. 0. 32, 0 0.031. And 34. 0 0.02, 52, 0 0.019, 58, 0 0.07. I can just screenshot as we go along because I'm going to, I'm moving quickly. I'm going to erase it. All right, so let's... All right, so I finished. Let me see if I can cut this graph or a little bit of it. Right, so the highest number was, what is this rate? It's 0 0.9, if I can do the time. All right, yes. so, let's, so the first one, so we're plotting rate against time. So when the rate is 0 0.0991 times 11. That's about I saw eleven seconds. Probably eleven, 11 years. So it's about here. Then when the rate is zero point five times twenty seconds, that's. Time is 11 seconds. Rate is this. Time is 20 seconds. Rate is 0 0.05. No, I don't think I'm doing it. Zero point zero nine is up top. 
I'm just going to use 0 0.08 as 0 0.09. Because we have to move on. So let's just say this is 0 0.09. And it would be a in seconds. And then no, 0 0.05 to 20. And then 0 0.031 to 30. That's this. And then 0 0.023 for That's about here. Then 0 0.019 to 15. That's about here. And then 0 0.017 to 50. That's about. So clearly it's a curve. So we will take a curve. So the curve would look like that. See so the question that they were asking. Per second. All right, so the first question says, based on the graph, based on the graph that it did use how the rate of reaction varied with time. So from the graph, you can see that as the time increase, the rate of reaction decreased. Based on our graph plotted, did you saw the rate of reaction varied with time? And then it says, explain how the trend in the rate. All right, we basically see the shape of the graph so I can clear it and move on. We know the shape of the graph. We can look at the question. Based on the graph, so so basically, this was the shape of the graph. Based on the graph, that it did you saw the rate of of reaction varied with time. As, as the as the length of time increased, the rate of reaction decreased. So you could say that as well if you want. As the length of time. Rate of reaction. Decreased. And then now part two, it says explain how the trend in the rate of reaction stated in B1 relates to the surface area of the zinc granules. So in experiment one, with the fastest rate, it would have the highest surface area. So Explain all the trend, because the trend is that as it well, explain all the trend in the rate of reaction stated in B1 relates to the surface area of the zinc granule. All right, so the sum of the surface area, not the surface area, the sum of the particle size, the reaction would have occurred quickly, right? But if this particle size was big, the reaction it would take a longer time for it to 
react so the reaction would move slower the particle size so we are supposed to use surface area and related to the trend the trend is that reaction decreased as the time increased The larger the surface area, volume ratio, the faster the reaction occurs. First, I can have to scroll back up. Check something. All right, let's look at the table. Here, let me just click undo. All right, so in this column, you have the size of the zinc granules. So you realize that the, as you move from one experiment to the next, the size of the zinc granule is increasing. When you increase it, the time is getting the time is getting slower. So the bigger the, the bigger the size of zinc you are using, the rate is getting slower. So it's taking longer to react. So just bear that in mind. So from one experiment going to the next. We are increasing this, we are increasing the size of the zinc. The smaller the zinc, the greater the surface area. All right. So in experiment one, it has the largest surface area to, to volume ratio. So it has the fastest rate. In experiment six, the particle size was the largest. So the surface area to Volume ratio was the smallest. Right? Let's scroll back down. Yeah. What should this much up? Oh. Right. So the larger the surface area to volume ratio, the faster the reaction. So the that is why in say in experiment one, it had the larger surface area. And in experiment six, it had the smallest one. So as time went on, it took a longer time to react. So you can just add that experiment. So the reaction in experiment one was fastest. It had the largest, highest surface area. up to volume. All right, let's move on. This is list three factors other than surface area that affects rate of reaction. That is concentration, temperature, presence of a catalyst.
particle size and surface area. Particle size and surface area is kind of one in the same. So the smaller the particle size, the higher the surface area. We can put either of these as a factor. Therefore, so temperature concentration catalyst, particle size slash surface area. So those are the four factors that affect it. Right, one safety precaution, just acid to metal, uh, probably wear gloves, not much there. It's an acid, so the only thing you really need to protect yourself from is the acid. All right, suggest so one way in which Michael and Jennifer may have controlled the temperature during the experiment. This question is just like the question 122 we are going to get a temperature increase. So to prevent it from increasing, I use a styrofoam cup with lead. You carry out the experiment, carry out the experiment in a styrofoam cup. Uh, we should check about this. And show the temperature to prevent it from increasing. All right, the balance equation. It was zinc, metal with sulfuric acid. Acid and metal, salt and hydrogen gas. Yes. already balanced. And it says calculate the total volume of hydrogen gas that would be produced at RTP from 0 0.55 grams of zinc. So the first thing I need to work out is the mole of zinc. The mole of, of zinc, we have the mass 0 0.55 grams divided by mass of zinc, which is 65.4 gram per mole. That's what, uh, 0.55 divided by 65.4, 8.4, times 10 to the minus three, four one times 10 to the negative three mole. They have the mole of zinc. Once it's a reaction, you have to use mole ratio to get what you want. So one mole of zinc reacts to produce one mole of hydrogen gas. So the, mole, the mole ratio Ratio between zinc and hydrogen gas is one to one. So molar of hydrogen equal to same thing up here, 8.41, 8.41 times 10 to the minus three mode. And as you know, volume is equal to all times RTP in this case. Going to work with the CM cube again, you could use 24 AM cube for RTP. All right, so 
whole times are 3 8.41 times 10 to the minus 3 times 24,000. Eight point four times four thousand four hundred and one point eight four CMQ CMQ. Whenever you get a question involving a reaction to find the the Mole, where you will need to find the mole of something, you are going to have to use mole ratio. So they gave you the mass of zinc and ask you for volume of hydrogen. To get volume of hydrogen, you need the mole of hydrogen. There's nothing to, for you to calculate the mole of hydrogen. You have to convert the mass of zinc into moles. Once you get the mole of zinc, you use mole ratio and find the mole of hydrogen gas. Once you have the mole of hydrogen gas, then you can go ahead and times it by RTE. And that's the answer. Right, so let's move on again. As, was that it for the reads question? That was it. All right, going to the organic chemistry questions. What is a polymer? Polymers are macro molecules. Just remember, polymers, they are very large molecules. So they are like chains, right? You know that to make a chain, they are joining up small links to make it very long, all right? So it's a macro molecule. If you want to put a large molecule, you can go ahead. So macro molecule it is very large. And it is made by joining many small units. The units, we call them monomer, right? And then you, know, you have addition polymerization and you have condensation polymerization. With addition polymerization, A type of polymerization in which monomers are joined together. Following I found to put a result All right, so those are joined together following the breaking 
of a carbon to carbon double bond. So addition polymerization is strictly for alkene. It only occurs in alkene. Third, the breaking of a carbon to carbon double bond is a feature of addition polymerization. Condensation mode. Condensation. Again, you would still put a type of polymerization. I'm going to start from. It's a type of polymerization in which monomers are joined together. Following the removal of the small molecule, right? And that small molecule is generally water. Just like in esterification, we are joining the acid and the alcohol by removing a molecule of water that is condensation. All right? So in addition polymerization, you are joining the monomers by breaking carbon to carbon double bonds in the alkene. Condensation, it's like esterification, we are joining up two compounds, but in when we're doing polymerization, we call them monomers. So you're joining up two monomers by removing a molecule of water. All right. So yes, that is that. I'm going to move on so if I want to screenshot at this point. Okay. And clear our joints. Right, so it says, take the type of polymerization, give an example for your choice. This is here. All right, I'm going to break from this for a second. I'm going to run through the process of polymerization quickly. And then I get back to the first paper. So we're doing addition polymerization. For addition polymerization, strictly done by alkene. Okay. Must know, so you must know, ethene, well, you must know to do polyethene, poly. Ethene, poly, chloro, ethene, and poly. I'm going to start now. So the name of the polymer. Is poly. I'm going to start with yeah, polyethene. So the name of the polymer is poly. And for so polyethene, the name of the monomer is ethene. So all you do is put poly 
in front of the monomer and you get the name of the polymer. The monomer is ethene, the polymer, polyethene. All we're going to do is join up a lot of ethene molecules. So this is ethene. And the jar are next ethene. I'm going to Remember, in addition to polymerization, we are joining up many different monomers by breaking what carbon to carbon double bonds. And color code is the double bond. I'm going to put one of them in red. Now, how am I going to join up this alkene? So this is one molecule of ethene, called ethene one, ethene two, ethene three. I am going to use this double bond here. All right, I'm going to use the, the bond in red, do this. So notice the, the double bond is broken. So I'm using this bond to join these two carbons together. And I'm using this one here to join these two together, All right? So in order to make this polymer, I have to break these carbon to carbon double bonds because I am using one of them to join up the carbon atoms. But look, all I need to do, break the all you need to do, break the double bond and just put a line in front. Put some move it from here and put it between the two carbon atoms. Move it from here and put it in front. All right, and that's it. Move it from here and you would put it in front of it. All right, so this is polyethylene. No, this is just showing a portion of polyethene, right? So we generally put it in square brackets to show that it can continue. Remember, polymers are very large molecules. So this is just, all right, so this is polyethene, polyethene with three repeating, Three units. What are repeated units? So this here is one, this is the next one, and this is the next one. So it is what is repeating each time. So your repeating unit, it comes from the monomer. If you are asked to draw, the structure of your repeating unit, it is what is produced after you break the double bond. So this structure here is the repeating unit. Right? These are three monomers. Right? Three molecules of ethene. They are your monomers. This is a portion of polyethylene. All right, so let's put portion of 
coming easy with three repeated units. So if it has three repeated units, it means you will need three ethene monomers, right? So that is polyethene. But you should know. Know your monomer, know the, well, from you know the monomer, you can draw the polymer. And you must know to draw the repeating unit, right? So what is the difference between polyethene and polychloroethene? Only difference, only difference is that one of the hydrogens will have on, sorry, one of the carbons will have chlorine on it. So the monomer, if the polymer is polychloroethene, the monomer is chloroethene. So the only difference between polyethene and polychloroethene is literally a chlorine atom instead of hydrogen. Wherever the chlorine is, just put it up. And there you have it. So this is polychloroethene. Polychloroethene. That's it. All right? The so ethene is C2H4. Polychloroethene, let's take up a hydrogen and put on chlorine, which means that the repeating unit is, if you notice, this is what is repeating each time. Carbon with chlorine and the hydrogen. Carbon with chlorine, two hydrogen. Carbon with chlorine, two hydrogen. That is what is. All right, polypropene. This is how you have to draw it. In order to distinguish between polyethene and polypropene, you keep it just like this. Where of the chlorine, you write CH3. We are doing polypropene. We are doing polypropene. So if you realize nothing much changes in the structure. The first one, everything was hydrogen. The second one, take off the hydrogen, put on chlorine. Polypropene, instead of the chlorine, it's CH3. And the same thing happens, you break the double bond when you join them up. As you can see, everything is essentially this. Right? means that the repeating unit is not going to be CL this time, it's going to be CH. They're literally just changing one thing in the repeating unit in the polymer and in the monomer, all right? So these are the three that you need to know for addition polymerization. These are the three monomers for them. These are the three monomers that you must know. Ethene, polychloroethene. So this is the monomer for polypropylene. 
This is the monomer for polychloroethene. And this is the monomer for polyethene. I'm going to put RP for repeat in unit. They have the monomizing grid. We have the, the monomer in green and in blue, we have the repeating units. So this is the repeating unit for polypropene. This is the repeating unit for polychloroethene. This is the repeating unit for have the monomer repeating you monomer repeating you right that is it for addition polymerization only thing i will say they ask to draw a portion of a polymer if they tell you two repeating units they are going to use two monomers all right if they say use three repeating units they use three Monomers. All right. If they give you a number for the repeating unit, that is what you must use. All right. So for this, it would be drawing a portion of polyethylene with three repeating units. One, two, three. If they said four, you would have to put on a fourth one. If they had said two, you would erase this one. All right. All right. So we need to move on. So I'm going to clear screen now. Condensation. I don't need to move even to cover this one. All right, this first one, polyester. You already know about esterification. So with this one, you are representing a, a diacid. You just draw a box, draw a box and put two carboxyl groups on it. Okay. So the monomer, we call it a, a diacid. The monomer is the diacid. The next monomer is a dialkyl. So for the polyester, you just draw a box put two C, two car boxes group on either end, the next box and put two OH group. Take water off of the acid and hydrogen off of the alcohol. Monomers always have double bonding. All right, so every time they ask to go, I'm reading a question here. Yes, just right here, yeah, put it inside the bucket. When they ask you to draw the polymer, yeah. And for addition polymerization, the monomers, yes. So the monomers will always have double bond. All right, it is the repeating unit that does not have a double bond. So the repeating unit is what you get when you break the double bond. All right, so for polyethylene, the monomer 
is E phi. Right? So that's the monomer. When you break the double bond, you know, right? you put one there and this one in front. This is here, repeating unit. And you would do that for both the ethene, poly, ethene, propene, and chloro ethene. Just remember for propene, do not draw them, do not draw it in a straight line. For propene, do not do this. Just caution me. This is what you do for propene. Don't draw them out in a straight line. Okay? Let's continue again. Hope that will. All right. All right. So I always take the OH from the acid and the hydrogen from the alcohol. What you are trying to do, you need to ensure that this carbon is able to attach to this oxygen, which means that. You have to get hydrogen out of the way and you have to get OH out of it. You need the carbon of the hydroxyl group, sorry, you need the carbon carboxyl group to attach to the oxygen of the alcohol. So you need to get everything that is blocking them so that a connection can be made. That's all we are doing. Getting everything out of the way so that a bond can be formed. And let's continue again. That would be H. Bond O. Box. P. Double bond O. Now remember, OH is no longer there. H is no longer there either. After you draw this, next in line is the oxygen of the alcohol. I and So that is how you form a polyester. Circle the link, circle this. So, this is the ester bond. All right. If you are asked to identify the link on it, or they say the ester bond, this is your ester bond. All right. So, this is your polyester. Now, when you look at the reaction, right, what took part in the reaction? OH group of the acid took part in the reaction. So over here, take off the OH group. For the alcohol, it was the hydrogen that took part in the reaction. They take off the hydrogen. Remember, polymers are large molecules. This is just showing how it forms, which means that this portion is going to react with the next acid, but here is going to react with the next alcohol. All right. So this is just a portion of your polyester. Just join them, take off the OH group and take off the hydrogen of the alcohol, and that's it. In the, so whatever group took part in the reaction, when you come over here, just erase it and put a line. Right? So let's move to the next one. Poly A minor. The poly A minor. Then just use a letter and put two amine groups.
right? So it's diamine and diacid. But it's C double bond O. So as usual, take the OH from the acid and the hydrogen from the AB. We're right? trying to join the carbon to the nitrogen. This hydrogen gone. This OH gone. So next in line is carbon. All right. As I said before, what took part in the reaction? OH group take it off. Hydrogen of the amine. That is how you form your polyamide. This right here is called your amide bond. So in an S in a polyester, it is called the ester bond. But the polyamide is called the amide bond. Right? Condense C O N E. Normally, the carboxylic acid would come first and the amine next side. All right, what I'm going to do are the next reaction here. They don't have to be just two. And then you could add the next carboxylic acid out here. All right. So you don't have to just get two. You put, put in a third and a fourth and so. That is why I put it in a square bracket and put it in. For this, you must know your monomers. Diamine, diacid, or the polyamide. Diacid, diacid, for the polyester. Bonding the polymer for the polyester, ester. For the amine, for the amide, amide bond. Moving on again. So we have two more to do. We're going to do protein now. The monomer monomer is amino acids. This one now is no diacid or no dialkyl. Again, just draw a box. We're going to put our boxy group on one end and then AB group on the next end. The rest is not important, but Let's take cook on the exam. You select R and H. It's still amino acid, right? Don't worry about the middle section. Right? Even if it says C, H, R, P, double bond O. Once you see carboxyl group on one end and amine on the next end, that's an amino acid. Doesn't matter what they use in the middle. Once it's a carboxyl group and NH2 and the same molecule, that's an amino acid. Okay. Three sex students. We do we do both we do polymerization at C sec and K. 
The difference is a cape, you would where we have the box, where we have the, the box, we don't use the box at cape. All right, so like the polyamide, you would have to draw the actual structure of the amide. Right. But see, sir, we simplify it. We just focus on the groups that are taking part in the reaction. Right. When it comes to protein, when it comes to protein, this part in the middle is not important. Our boxing group and the baby. Group. Right. And so that's one protein. Is a mixed color. So the NH2 group is always on the left, and the carboxy group is on the right. So again, remove the OH from the acid and the H from the amine. This is just like polyamide. However, the monomer is different. It's not a diacid and a dialkyl. Right? So one compound has both the COA, the carboxyl group, and the amine group. So what will happen? H box P double bond O. Remember the OH is gone, the nitrogen, the hydrogen of this is gone. So what we have next is nitrogen, hydrogen, P double bond O H. And as usual. Take off this hydrogen, take off the OH. A protein, this bond, it's an amide bond as well, right? But with protein, we call it peptide bond. Right? But it is still, it's still an amide bond. So you have to remember your monomers, all right? Let me just do back this on the exam. You, you can say R, hold on. C, R, H, W, one, O, H, And then you will see R prime, H, Again, we're not interested in the R. We're not interested in, in what is in the middle. Just remove the OH. Just remove the OH and the H. And that is what we're interested in. But just remember, it's a molecule. You see NH2 on it, as well as the carboxyl group. That's, a, that's an amino acid, and you're doing protein. All right, so let me draw the arrow. That would be the same thing. Then, H, N, H. OH is gone, dash, NH, R prime. We're using R prime to differentiate 
which is amino acid. R, that's one amino acid. R prime, that's a different amino acid. That's why it has one prime. As usual, we're not putting on the OH group, not putting on the OH group. I'm just letting you know. So you go on there and see the C and the R, that's amino acid. Right? And again, this is the peptide bond. On the amide bond. But do not go on the amide and call it a peptide bond. On the protein, that is the only time you call it a peptide bond. All right, ready again. So the final one now is polysaccharide. So we did polyester, polyamide protein. Condensation is four of them. There are giants. Polysaccharide. The monomer is glucose. But the, the glucose, it is going to appear like a diet alcohol. It will still will look like the, the dialogue because we are using right? I right, so just take each from one of them and hydrogen from the next one. All right, so if I take OH from this one, I must take it off from over here. My color. Remember how it works. Whatever takes part in the reaction, we're going to remove it. X, so OH is gone, right? What comes next? This H is gone, so you have O. I put on the O H. O. O H. What are we going to take off? When I look at this, the one I'm color coding in black, O H is what is reactive. I'm going to take off the O. But this one, it is the hydrogen. So I'm going to take off the hydrogen. So that is how you get your poly. By the way, in all of these reactions, they're getting water as a product as well. Notice two hydrogens and then oxygen. So you're getting H2. Right? And that's it. I'm going to post in the community section. Once I end, I'm just going to post a chart that has the name of the polymer and their use. They must know their use. All right, I'm just all right, we're going back to the question now. All right, so we had defined, we had defined polymers already, distinguish between them. I will give you 30 seconds. Before I give you the answer, I'll just allow you to just make a quick attempt. All right, if you can get the answer. I'll give about 30 seconds.
All right, let's continue. All right, in the comment section, if you want to type quickly, what do you think? All right, I see. Yes, someone said poly A might. And that is correct. That she, yes, it's correct. It is poly A might. So, what I was going to ask, oh, wait. When it says the type of polymerization, don't tell the, the name of it. So is it addition or condensation? So it is up this polymer here, it is a polyamide, but they are asking for the type of polymerization. So is it addition or condensation? You can type it quickly in the comment section before I give you the answer. Let's see if I want to type it. Is it addition or condensation? All right, so it is condensation. As we know, once it's not an alkene, it is condensation. Right, that is correct. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it will not be addition. So addition is only for alkene. And so the person that name addition. No man, on the alkene is addition. Remember, I think put it on the board. Press the Addition is only for alkenes. All right. So unless you saw a compound, if you don't see anything with just carbon and hydrogens, it's not condensation. So if you don't see CCC, right? A lot of carbon hydrogens. It's not condensation, all right? So, all right, so just remember, addition is for us. So the name of the type of polymerization is condensation. Just write it for writing, see, condensation. Even Give an explanation. All right. Remember from the differentiation earlier. Two monomers were giant. Were giant. And a small. Don't have to say small, can't say a molecule of water was removed. Two monomers were joined and a molecule of water was removed. So that is the next thing. Once you see water, it's condensation. And so that is all we know. The join of two monomers and the molecule of water was removed. And um, this Palma question is from 2019. If anybody joined it. All right. It says I identify one use. All right. As I know, as I said, I'm going to post a picture in the community section of a table with the uses of all of them. Or we could say in the textile industry, because of the clothes. Clothing and textile industry. But the clothes, for the alkenes, all sort of plastic 
materials. All joints. All right, so this is the, the whole molecular series to which compound A and B belong. So, as I know, once you see the OH group there, that's an alcohol. So, the compound A, an alcohol. Compound B is carboxylic acid. Take the name of compound A, A is ethanol. All right, so it says compound A and B react to form compound C. Fetch the fully discrete formula of compound C. So we have ethanol and propanoic acid. So I'm going to work it here. So I'm just showing about. So the reaction is esterification. When you're doing esterification, the alcohol, sorry, the carboxylic acid. When you're doing esterification, which is carboxylic acid plus alcohol. You draw the carboxylic acid first. All right, so when you do esterification, draw the carboxylic acid first. Which means that the carboxylic acid will not be plus propanic acid. Let me check out. Yeah, propanoic acid. And so you draw your carbox. Then you draw your alcohol. So always carboxylic acid, then alcohol. So this is just like condensation, just like polyester formation. Except this is just one carboxy group and one OH. The OH is always from the acid and the hydrogen from the alcohol. Remember, the OH is gone from the acid and the H from the alcohol. All right, and that is your, this is your ester. The ester bond right here. So the whole molecular series is ester. This is your ester bond. How do we name our ester? All right, so this is propanoic acid. Propanoic acid. This is ethanol, All right? When you name it the ester, you'll remove IC and change it to AT. 
for the arc one, remove panel and change it to wire L. Arc one, portion comes first when naming an Esther. All right, so in the name of Esther, the alcohol portion comes first. All right, so over here is the alcohol portion, right? Yes. So ethanol, it will become ethyl. They take off the anal and add white, so it's ethyl. Propanoic, it becomes propanoic, right? The name now is ethyl propanoid. Right? That is the name of the ester. So, in terms of the structure, put the acid first and the alcohol second. Right? But in terms of the name, it is the alcohol then the acid. Okay. So that is all you want, Esther. Now, as a reaction, so this is a reaction for alcohol and carboxylic acid. But I'm just going to use it to do a quick react, just explain it quickly for the Esther. So the reaction of Esther you really need to know. You must know how to hydrolyze the ester. All right. So look, very simple. I'm going to do hydrolysis of the ester. All I'm going to do is turn the arrow in this direction. What we're doing now is called hydrolysis of ester. Hydrolysis of ester. Right? We are converting the ester back to alcohol and carboxylic acid. All right, so look, when you join up the acid to the alcohol, we remove the molecule of, of water. You get the ester plus water. So if you add the water to the ester, it is going to break the ester bond. So adding back water to the ester, what you are doing is putting back OH there and the H on the alcohol. Hydrolysis of ester, we are breaking up the ester to give you back the alcohol and the acid. Right, it is the reverse. So here we have an ester. You can try and name it because my stream is about 30, probably 20 seconds ahead of yours. So you can try and name this ester before it comes up on your screen. All right, so as I said, so this is an ester. This portion, all right, how do you do so? Let's say you get an ester. How do you know what is the acid? And what is the alcohol? Remember, the first portion is the acid. Over here is the acid, over here is the alcohol. Right? Just separate the carbon from the oxygen. 
It's two carbons, so we know that is ethanoic acid. And this is one carbon, so it is ethanol. So if you should hydrolyze this ester, you should hydrolyze this ester by reacting it with, with alcohol, with water, you should get back the carboxylic acid and the alcohol is methanol. Right? So this is hydrolysis of ester. No, when you're doing hydrolysis of ester, of acid hydrolysis and base hydrolysis. This is what you will get with acid hydrolysis, all right? And we use sulfuric acid as the catalyst. So when you're doing hydrolysis of the ester, you have acid hydrolysis and you have base hydrolysis. The acid hydrolysis, you are going to get back the acid and the alcohol. You get acid and alcohol. They get the carboxylic acid and the alcohol. When you do, yes, and the name is, for the first one, it would be ethyl propanoid. But for this one, what would be the name for this one in terms of the ester? Yeah, see if you can name it in the comment section. All right. So, yes, so when I do acid hydrolysis of the ester, you get the acid that was in the ester as well as the alcohol. However, when I do base hydrolysis, base hydrolysis, Instead of the acid, this is what you will get. And with, let us say, if, as the base, we use sodium hydroxide, right? Products. Products are salt and alcohol. So from this same example, where of the OH for the acid, it will be replaced with Na. Well, not the, not the OH. H. Methyl ethanoid, right, that is correct. The name of the ester on the board. All right. So, in this base hydrolysis, they do not get back the carboxylic acid. They are going to get back a salt. And so where the OH of the OH group in the acid, replace it with the metal. And you will get your alcohol. So base hydrolysis and all that is on the board. Base hydrolysis. This process, this, if the ester used, ester used is fats, just like in fats and oil. So if you if you are used some fats, are actually esters, right? So if you are using fats. It's called separatification. The test I used is FATS. Then we call it separatification. Separatification. Right? And separatification 
process of making soap. Process by which soap is made. So yeah, actually, so when you do base hydrolysis of fats, we're actually making soap. One second. A process by which soap is made, it is the base hydrolysis of a of a base hydrolysis. All right, but just remember if you hydrolyze it, if it's acid hydrolysis, you get back the acid and the alcohol. If it's base hydrolysis, let's say you are hydrolyzing the ester using sodium hydroxide, just know that you do not put, you do not write the full carboxylic acid. Instead of the H, you will put NA. In both cases, you get the alcohol. When it's Acid hydrolysis, right? The salt is the soap. That is correct. Yes. So if it was right, so this if, if this was the fat, the salt. So this is this salt, right? And as as the person in the comment section says, salt is soap. So when we use fats, salt is the soap. If we are using Right. So soap is actually the sun. All right. Let's get back to the to the exam paper. All right, where were we? Right, so I identified the whole molecular series to which compound C belongs. We know that compound C is an ester. There are two other types of reaction compound A can undergo. A was the alcohol, so it can undergo oxidation, it can undergo dehydration. Let's download this and I scroll down to number. Let's work in the art then in question. All right, we already did this from the 2022 20, paper. All right, write the molecular formula of the second and third members of the alkane homologous series. That's ethane and ethene. Sorry. That's ethane and propane. That would be C two H six and C three H eight. Derive the ge the general formula for alkanes. Uh, we know the general formula of C N H N plus two. Yeah, that, that is also good massacre.
and where was that? Right, CNH two N plus two. And we know that N is equal to the number of carbons. So they want us to show how we get CNH two N plus two. All right, let's use an example. Example, not sure exactly what they want here. All right, so we're doing C5H12, so N is equal to five. C5H two times five plus two. So that would be equal to C5H12. So you can see that by using this formula, you can get the amount of hydrogen just by giving the, the number of carbon. Not sure if this is exactly what the one I derived it. This year, uh, 2019. One second. Okay. Let's scroll down. This. All right, one beauty in Berlin. We already defined this from. 2022, so we know that structural isomers, they have the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. All right, so Jaggi fully displayed structural formula of one butene and its two isomers. All right, so draw one butene. And we get one butene, so four carbons. You can put it either at this end or at this end. Careful when you're putting on the hydrogens, every carbon must have four lines around it. Okay? So ensure you don't put five hydrogens, I mean, three hydrogens on this one, or two on this one. All right, so that's one beauty. Yeah, it's yeah, it's 2019. All right, remember earlier when I did the other paper, right? When I did isomers, all I need to do is take carbon from the end. All right, I will have to scroll there. So I'm going to take this carbon from the end and put it on the middle one. However, when it comes to alkene, right, to get an isomer, you can simply move the position of the double bond. So this is, no, it's two, then, no, it's then, No, oh, it's May, it's June 2019. All right, yes, so when it comes to alkene, so this year was one beauty. This down here is two beauty, right? They can actually shift the shift the position of the double bond to get an isomer. Okay. Of course, they're going to put on buckle hydrogens. All right. And then now with the third isomer, they're going to take uh, this carbon at the end. All right, so that's it. We would have three 
to put the double bond anywhere you want, right? Either here or here. The one that you take up, just remember this. Do not put it back on any of these carbons. So do not do this. Even if you think it is correct, it is incorrect. Right? You don't have the time to go over it again. Why it is incorrect? Just know, take off a carbon from the end. Do not put it. So when I take off this carbon, it's if I take off this carbon, I have one, two, three remaining. They are going to put back this on the structure. So you have to put it on the one in the middle. Right? Just remember that. Right? Also, remember isomers must have the same molecular formula. It means that all of these must be C4H8. So let us check after we finish. All right, so three and three, six, six and two, eight. One, two, three, four carbon. Different structure. By the way, before it appears on the screen, see if you can name this compound. So it's three carbons. So that's, I want to name it. I want to put the name here. Three carbons. So it is propene. You can say one propene, you don't have to pick up the carbon. All right, so one propene. Remember now, when you have a CH3 group that is not a part of the chain, we call it methyl. So it is methyl propene, right? Methyl group is on carbon two. It is two methyl, one propene, right? And that is all. You would do the isomers and name them. So those were the three isomers. Clear this. To find the term unsaturated. Unsaturated. Unsaturated refers to the presence. Presence of carbon to carbon double bond in a compound. Right. I could say yes. So, I said when you're naming other keens, you can say one propene or you can say pro one in. And I say you can put the number between the two parts. All right, so unsaturated refers to the presence of carbon to carbon double bonds. So that is why we say that alkenes are unsaturated. Alkenes are unsaturated. And alkenes, alkenes are saturated. All right? Because the alkanes, they only have carbon to carbon single bonds. Then it says, state what is meant by hyd a hydrogenation reaction. This is a reaction in which hydrogen gas. is added to an alkene. All right, then it says, just the fully displayed structural formula for the hydrogenation product of one beauty. Now, if they ask you for product, do not write an equation, all right? You need to write the equation to get the answer. Do the equation in pencil, then you erase the 
reactants and draw the product in pen. So the, here, they are not asking you for an equation. They're just asking you for the product. But if you need to do the equation to get the product, that's fine, but do not do it in pen. So this is one butene. As I said, I can put it here. This is carbon one, this is carbon two. I can put it up. And in the interest of time, just put an hydrogen. We're going to react it with H2. Remember, when you're reacting alkenes, I'm going to break the double bond. And there are two things to the carbon of the double bond. Only the carbons of the double bond. All right, don't add it anywhere else. These carbons are not involved. Only the carbons of the double bond. All right, so this is what you will get. One, two, three, four. The double bond is broken. The hydrogens, so these are the two carbons of the double bond. One hydrogen goes to each of them. They are converting the alkene into an alkene. So hydrogenation converts alkene to alkene. Okay. Now, as I said, it asks for the product. So all you would draw is beauty. So they, they did not ask for any of over here, just this. Okay. But they asked for the hydrogenation product. It's all right, that's it for the organic. All right, I'm just going to do a quick little recap of some random stuff that I deem important. Organic chem, and then I will end this session. And I'm going to stop here. All right. All right, if they ask about physical property. We would lose marks if I put equations. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Answer what they ask for. Put it that way. So they did not ask you for an equation. So as I said, if you need the equation to help you, go ahead and write the equation with it pencil. Once you get your product, erase everything else and keep the product, right? And ensure your product is in pain. All right, if they ask about physical properties, for your alkanes and alkenes, they are the same. Everything is low. So when it comes to physical properties, alkanes and alkenes, everything is low. And what are the physical properties? Melting, so low melting point, low boiling point, low boiling point. Melting point, low boiling point, low density, and they are insoluble. And remember at least two of these. They are insoluble in polar solvents. Like water. So these are four physical properties of alkenes and alkenes. For alcohol, 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 and uh, carboxylic acids. Oh, and in terms of just random info, the 
alkanes and alkenes. This are this is not in terms of physical. Alkanes and alkenes, they are non-polar. Okay. Alkanes and alkenes, they are non-polar because So you normally use lecture negative at this stage. All right. So just put it simple. They are non-polar because the, the electrons are shared. Carbon and hydrogen. Right? Alkanes are non polar because the electrons are shared equally between the carbons and hydrogens. And it is for that reason why they are insoluble in polar solvents. So the alkanes and the alkenes, they are insoluble in water. The reason water is polar. Alkene and alkene, they are non-polar. That is why your cooking oil, it does not dissolve in water. Right? So, water is polar, the hydrocarbon is non-polar, so they don't mix. Remember the term, like, right, dissolve, right. When it comes to carboxylic acid and alcohol, carboxylic acid and alcohol, They are polar, so they dissolve in polar solvents like water. Right? Right. All right, so let us say they ask which one is which one will dissolve in water, if any, ethane and ethanol. You will say ethane is non-polar, water is polar, and so it will not dissolve in water. Ethanol is polar, water is polar, so it will dissolve in water. Right? Or it is soluble in water. Ethanol is soluble, water. <laughs> Ethane is insoluble. And remember, it's because it is non polar. In terms of melting and boiling point, they are higher. Right? So the alkenes and alkenes, everything is low for alcohol and carboxylic acids. They are not very high. Comparing to these, it would be higher. Right? So they are relatively high melting and everything here, higher. So we can put it relatively high. High. The same physical properties put relatively high. Melting point, boiling point, let's see. Remember, they are soluble in polar solvents. Oh, what, what I should mention for the other, for these, again, this is just side info. All right, we have insoluble in polar solvents. They are soluble in non-polar solvents. Right? So they are soluble in non-polar solvents. I just want to clear the board again. Okay. 
versus burn with flame, blue flame. So, alkanes, they burn with a clean blue flame. Alkene, the flame is yellow. Sometimes we describe it as soot. I don't remember this spelling. I think it's S O O T. Let me check it first. Burnt as soot. Soot flame. All right. So, alkenes burn with a soot flame. So you can see yellow or sweet. Just remember also, if you want to, to distinguish between alkenes and alkanes, they use, use bromine, water, or potassium per manganese. No reaction with alkene. Reaction with alkene. Alkene will decolorize them. Just remember that also, I will post a picture of it. You need to know the use of the different fragments, like the different fractions. Like C1 to C4, they are fuels. They're all dry. I'm going to end the rates of reaction in the next 10 minutes. All right, so it is the decreasing concentration of the reactants and the increasing concentration of products per unit time. The factors as temperature increase, So if the acid to state of each factor affected, so as temperature increase, the rate of reaction increases. Reason. Kinetic energy of the molecules. The molecules for concentration, you would say the same thing as concentration increases, rate of reaction increases. Reason the just put. The collision frequency. 
um, catalyst creates an alternate route. Creates an alternate route with lower activation energy. That means more molecules collide with activation. More molecules collide with it. The need to describe an experiment the need to describe an experiment to let's say a duo to see your part tickle size affect you want to know part tickle size affect the rate of reaction just get a conical flask Get a conical flask, have acid inside of it, whatever acid they want to use. They're going to add some, whichever, they don't give you one, but let's say they give you one, right? Let's say a uh, magnesium, uh, calcium carbonate. So this is effect of part two for an experiment with particle size, you have a calcium carbonate in the acid. It's going to react and produce a gas. You have to cover it with a rubber ball. Okay? And inside of it, you are good of your, your gas range. Look something. What is huh? oh? You have the conical glass. Yes, three to let the gas. And you have the calcium carbonate and the acid. So remember, calcium carbonate plus, let's say, hydrochloric acid. Calcium chloride, carbon dioxide, and water. Because that gas is going to be produced, we can see which reaction. So in one container, we will have a large size, right? And then in the next container, you will use crushed samples. Okay, so they might ask for an experiment, isn't it? Just remember, all you have to do, wrap the base or the metal with an acid, like the gas, using the gas. Um, I have to go to end it here. And uh, just ensure you know your organic chemistry, know your reagents, all right? So those organic rates, oxidation, electrolysis, yeah, at least look over those. Organic is so try and remember your reagents. And always, I'm going to have to end it here. Right, this paper one. We'll have a paper one session on Thursday. So just work at least the 2022 and the 2021 uh, paper.
that's paper one. But, okay, so all the best. Uh, one, two, three, now.